Today I'd like to introduce you to a new XR tool which provides you with capabilities to build feature-rich WebXR experiences for the Apple Vision Pro, for MetaQuest 3, and others. Also, AR experiences for mobile and beautiful web experiences by using the best 3D web rendering engines available today. The WebXR tool is called Mattercraft and it exposes a variety of XR features through an easy to use web-based IDE. And trust me that I meant easy, and this comes from actually testing this tool and geeking out with it for the last few weeks. All right, let's talk about some of the major features available in Mattercraft. Mattercraft provides you with a variety of out-of-the-box templates, such as a virtual reality template, a mixed reality or pass-through template, and also many templates available for mobile. The animation system is honestly pretty unique. You can add keyframes like any other animation tool, adjust the easing on curves, and create different states. But the transition between the states is a very unique feature. You can switch states and those states changes generate transitions. And I will show you more about how this works today. There are more features available such as a real-time physics engine, also a particle system, one-click publishing, committing history, and a very useful feature called the live preview tool, which allows you to preview your Minecraft editor changes in real time and from any of the targeted devices, including headsets, mobile, and also web. But enough theory for today, let's take a look at how those features work in action. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. Create a free trial account to get started. And then if you have done that, you can just go ahead and log in. Once you log in, it's gonna take you basically to this landing page where we have all of our projects and then just click on the plus symbol here. And this is gonna tell you what ways you can create different experiences with the tools that Zappar provides. In my case, we're gonna be using Mattercraft and then there's also Designer, Universal AR, and also Studio. So I'm just gonna focus on Mattercraft. So for the project name, we're gonna be basically focusing on doing kind of like a SpaceX fan project. So I'm just gonna say it's gonna be the Starship Mixed Reality Experience. And then for the trigger, we can also rename this. So we can do something similar. We can say Starship MR, and then we can just say QR code. All you have to do is just click on Open Mattercraft, and this is gonna open the IDE. I'm going to do a mixed reality experience for Apple Vision Pro, for MetaQuest 3, for the ML2, and Zapbox. So this is the one that I ended up using. So just go ahead and select that, click on Get Started. And then once you do, it's going to take you to this ID. It's going to it's going to look very similar to VS Code, very similar to you know Writer and other tools, except that it has you know the 3D view here, 3D view components, and you can hold your left click and then basically move your mouse around, and you're gonna be able to rotate it. If I hold my right click, I can also pan around, and then I can also you know zoom in and zoom out. There's also this little gizmo here that allows you to look at the different axes in 3D. So I can look at the Y axis, I can look at the Z. On the right side, you're gonna see the hierarchy. This is where we're gonna be working on a lot. If you are a Unity developer or Unreal developer, this is gonna be very similar to what you see today in those tools in Unity calls it hierarchy. So this is pretty similar to that. And then there's also no property. So if I were to select, for instance, here's the XR rig VR pass-through component, which in Unity is the XRX. So this is really common and very similar to what Unity does today. And you can see all the different options in here and we can enable them and disable them. You know, the space of the actual grab. So there's a grip space, a target ray space, which is gonna be the target of the ray. And then you can also change the models on the controller. So there's different options in here that you can look at. On the left side, you're gonna see the project. These are things that we are creating it excludes all the different modules that it installed. It just shows you what we need to see versus this view, which shows you everything that is happening behind the scenes because it's a, a node project. And then if you look at search, you can search in here for anything in the project, publish. We're gonna be using that quite a bit. You also get this QR code here, which is really cool. That way, if you're working on your experience, you pull your phone out or your ML2 out, anything that supports QR code actually scanning you can use this for, and then there's also some documentation in here that it's going to be helpful. And then you can also, if you wanted to start with an empty project, which I didn't do, but you could by looking at some of the templates, there was one that was just a blank template, 
You can actually use that and then just click on browse and there's going to be all the different components in here that you can add. The next thing that I want to do though is I want to change the controllers here. So if I were to select one of these ones by doing a left click and then hitting F, I can basically zoom into the actual component. You can also right click in here and then focus on 3D view. So if I go to the right controller and click on focus in 3D view, it's going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and change it to be that one. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We don't need that. We're actually going to be adding our own models. So I'm going to go back here into my project view and then we're going to be creating a new models folder. So I'm going to drag them all and then drop them into my models and you're going to see that it's going to happen asynchronously. It looks like they got downloaded. We can look at also the terrain that we're going to be displaying when we bring it into our experience. And then if I look at Mars, you can also look at that one. That one actually is compressed as well. And that's because we're going to see it from far. We don't really need to have a lot of detail. And then lastly, it's going to be the SpaceX, which I ended up downloading a more high resolution model. And then you can also add one if you wanted to do it in a different way. You can right click in here. and There's going to be a lot of things displaying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 3D model and then select GLTF. And then if you hit enter, you can rename them. In this case, I'm going to say that this one is going to be my Starship. That's the last one. And then you can do that. And then you can leave the extension if you want to. If you don't want the extension, it's not really going to hurt anything. set by one and then negative two here on the Z axis. So again, we're going to be right here where the controllers are. And then we're going to have this starship showing a little bit of set on the Z and then X axis. So things are looking better right now. We're getting some models in here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go here under defaults and then we're going to be creating a new environment component. So you can do an HDR, you can do a default environment, which we already have, but I'm going to do a sky environment. And as soon as you do that, it's going to change lighting and the environment look. You're going to see the sun in there and then it's going to give the scene more life. I'm going to go ahead and add a new text. And then if you go here, then you can also select the text. Let's go ahead and just publish it. So I'm going to go into my publish tab here and then we can either save all the changes or publish. So if you do publish, it's going to allow you to change to basically save all the changes. And then you can also do a custom version number. Or we can just leave it at that and then it's going to increment automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and do publish. And there we go. Your project has been successfully published. So if you go here, you can see that now we have a new version. I can open this version if I wanted to open it here on the browser or I can copy that version URL and paste it into the Meta Developer Hub. So the next thing that I want to show you though is how you can run this prototype by using the Quest 3 WebXR browser, which is what launches when you paste that URL. You can see the experience looks really cool. We have the text, the actual Starship showing, hand tracking is working successfully. We can also swap two controllers and it does that automatically by using the virtual reality template. We also have teleporting features, which is really cool. I didn't have to code that. So that's pretty awesome. And we can also use a snap rotation. On the Apple Vision Pro, you have to enable a few required WebXR settings. And this is what I'm showing you right now that you have to do by going into the feature flags and then enabling all the WebXR settings. And you can see that everything is working pretty well. We have hand tracking, label is showing, Starship is showing, and then all of our planets. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go ahead and go here into my project, and then I'm going to create a new folder. And then this one is going to be custom scripts. I'm going to have a couple of custom scripts in these videos. So that way we can keep things organized. I'm going to right click in here. And then you can also, you know, create a TypeScript file, HTML, and so on. So what I'm going to do for this one is going to be a custom behavior. And then this one I'm going to call that no skybox on AR. Oh. 
the first thing that you do here is you basically import all the different components that you're gonna be using. Also, there's an interface here for different attributes that you can pass in or properties that you can pass in into this class. And then this basically has all the things that you would need to create a behavior. They're already extending behavior. And then this is this happened to be a component. And then here's a constructor with all the different attributes. And then here we need to call basically into initialize. I didn't do that. So let me go ahead and do that just to make sure that this is going to work. So normally you have this structure for a behavior and then any of the implementation, custom implementation that you do, it's going to go inside of here. And then the word this just designates that we're going to be calling into a method within this class. So I'm calling into initialize and then this is a custom implementation that we just added. We're just checking by using the navigator XR. This is the XR system that WebXR API provides. And then I'm just calling into the e session supported method. So if we get a true, then we know that we can disable the skybox. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add that behavior, right? Now we can see that this shows no skybox on AR. And for some reason it's not showing our icon correctly. Let me see why that is. I'm gonna go back in here and then, yeah, because I'm missing the add symbol. So just make sure that you have the appropriate attributes. I'm gonna be linking the, basically the documentation that goes over that in the description of this video. So let me go ahead and select it and then go here into the plus. And now you can see that we have a cloud icon available. So the next thing that I wanna do though is I wanna start working on the legend. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new group. And then this one is going to be called legend. So we're gonna have multiple legends in here. And then I'm also going to be adding a text. This one we can call it the legend title. So let me go ahead and implement a new component. But before we do that though, before I forget, I'm gonna make this one visible. And I'm also going to make the other component visible, which was my March terrain. And there we go. And right now it doesn't look good, but don't worry about it. We'll make it look really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here on the custom scripts and then new custom behavior. And this one is gonna be called my line legend. So I ended up importing this use on before render. That is going to be a method or a function in TypeScript that you can use to basically run on every frame. And then the other thing that I also added was a reference to the scene here so that we can basically reference some of the components on the scene. Also from three, you can also bring in some of the different components available in the namespace or I think TypeScript calls them modules. And then we have a vector three, very similar to what we do in Unity, a line basic material, because we want to create a material in you know, a runtime. And then I also want to create basically a geometry object, which is going to be composed of different points. And then in here we have our line render class that extends the behavior, similar to what we did with the no skybox on AR. Also, this is gonna be an observable. And then I also have one for line star and then line end. So basically the width of the line the start of the line and then the end of the line. And then here's my Z component and how we get it by accessing this meta get Z component instance. And then in the constructor implementation, like I showed you before, this is our custom implementation. We create a new line basic material. We pass in the actual value for the color, for the line width, and then we register the use on before render. And then we pass in the context manager. And this is kind of like an inline meta inline function that we can define. We also get the line star and this resolve node ID, it allows you to basically resolve the ID of the actual component that is referenced through the node property. So I'll show you how we can reference those, but basically it gives you the right ID of the object and then also the right ID of the line 
end and then we construct our points. We're gonna start from the pivot point of the object that we have this assigned to. And then we're going to be extending it based on the position of that line end. And then line geometry, this is how we build it. We build this buffer geometry and then set points and then pass in the vector three array of points. And then if line star is defined, then we're gonna pass in the line geometry and also the material. So if I didn't make any mistakes, this should all work. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to associate this, I'm gonna go into my line star here and then I'm gonna add a new behavior. That's going to be the custom behavior. We also have our line and icon which we added. And as soon as we do that, nothing is gonna display just yet because we need to still populate some of these. I'm gonna set the line width to be two. The star object is going to be basically ourself. So it's going to be this line star underscore one. And then the line end is going to be the line end underscore one. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that this is now showing correctly. Now you can see that all the legends are linked together because of the group, the parent child relationship. And then the better yet though, like I can move everything, right? We can move the entire spaceship or the entire rocket. I can move it around and everything is going to move with it, which is where I want it to be at this point. That way we can start animating this. Basically, you know, showing the labels when we want to, not showing the labels, so let me walk you through some of those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here under animations and then I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so that we can focus on that and then I'm gonna create a new layer. So this new layer is going to have all the different animations. They call them estates and also timelines. And this is so that we can group those together. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one the starship layer. So I think of these as a group and also this group has easing. So if you go and basically transition between one of these animation layers to another one, it's gonna have, it's going to have some easing options available for you. It's always going to create a default and it's gonna be off, but I'm gonna be creating a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new state. And this one, we're gonna call it the legends of state. And the cool thing with this though, is we can start like adding different properties of things that we want to enable or not. So the reason why I added this legend group is so that we can con basically control all the different legend childs under it. And then we can basically turn it on and off. So what I'm gonna do here though, is you can basically start. So as soon as you select one of these, you're gonna see all these different plastic symbols. And what that means is that you can start animating them, right? You're gonna start basically tracking them in this animation system. So what I'm gonna do is when we don't want them on, we're gonna go ahead and basically turn them off. And that's really it. If we go back to off, it's going to show them because that's the default state. There's really nothing associated with that. And then legends off, it's going to look at that property and then that property basically has the value of false so we don't show it. So another thing we can do though is we can also clone these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say duplicate or we can do Basically on a Mac, I'm gonna do Command D and it's going to create a new one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rename it. And this one is going to be, let's go ahead and do Legends On. And on Legends On, I already have these available, right? Because I cloned it from the other one. I can just go ahead and go here and then set it to true. And now we can go ahead and click on them and we can see them in the design time, which is really, really cool. Okay, let's add a little more complexity to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a new one. In this one, we're going to be animating the rotation of the rocket, basically object type. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a new timeline. And legends, off, and then we rotation. And now if I click on it though, we're gonna have our timeline in here. I don't have the visibility option anymore because we basically didn't clone it, we created a new one. But it's as easy as going in here and then say, okay, you know what, I don't want this on. Then I'm gonna go here to the Starship with info and we're gonna be basically setting a new keyframe at 000 for the rotation. And then we can use these tools in here to go to the last frame. And then what I'm gonna do here for this value is we're gonna be setting this to 360. That way we can go all the way around. So if I hit play and we go back to the very beginning, hit play, you're gonna see that now the spaceship is going to start basically rotating over time. 
And the cool thing with this though is I can go back in here and then you can look at how this is transitioning between those different animations. So we can go back to the very beginning. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna do one where we are actually showing the labels and also rotating. So we can just right click in here and then, well, duplicate it and then rename it. And then for the name of this though, I want to use Legends On. So I'm gonna do Legends On. And then all we need to do here is I'm gonna go ahead and change these keyframe, right? I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna set it to true. So as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that now we have this animating. So we can go and look at this one, look at this one, look at this one, and then look at this one. So that looks really cool. So I wanna add one that is a little bit more complicated. Make this one the default so you can basically change that. And then the ones that we want to animate consistently, we wanna make sure that we loop them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new component. So if you go here and do new, there's going to be something transforms and then billboard. Once you do that, you're gonna be able to basically just move it up in here and then drag it and drop the legend title under the billboard. And then we can just change this value here. So now if we were to move around, you're gonna see that now that's going to be phasing the camera. All right guys, so this is the results of adding all of them as billboard, which looks really cool. And then if we go back into the animation here where we're tilting it, things should look okay. And it looks like this one is not correct. So let me go back. Well, that's, that's what happens when you don't change it to the right orientation, the right lock. Now it's locking to the camera. So if we go back in here, and I'm glad that those things happen, that way you guys can see the differences. And then, so this is a pretty cool animation, right? And you can change some of these transitions in here. I can go in here, and then if you wanna change the easing, so if we go back here to the very beginning, and then we can go into here, you can change how this is going to be animating. If you want to do maybe a bounce, we can change this and you can see, there we go. So now it's bouncing. Let me go ahead and get, get a little bit closer here to this so that we can see it better. So you can see that it's, it's bouncing, right? And then if we wanna change the time of the bounce, maybe we just do this for one second. You're gonna see that now, as soon as I do that, it's bouncing like a ball, which is really cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reset the time, reset the easing, and then I just like it normal. So you can go here from Mars and basically go back to Earth. And then in the from Earth example, you can see that we have Mars basically showing. If I go to Mars, then we know that we can go back to Earth. Okay, so next I wanna show you how we can map to some of the UI elements and basically activate the different actions, the states that we created from the animation system by basically pressing on a button, by using a ray, by either using a controller or by using hand tracking. So I went ahead and created this control panel. It's basically composed of different buttons and these buttons are very simple. They just have a sphere component attached to them and then basically they have a box. So I just went ahead and just resize them and I also added labels to each one of these so that you knew exactly what you needed to basically press on or bind. So if I go here, there's the box and then the button is basically the sphere and then the text. For the first one, I want to play the music for this experience. Basically, we're gonna be using these two tracks that we have in here. One is going to be this track, which is an MP3 player, you can drag and drop them as you need to. Basically, they support multiple audio files. So I have one for user interface. So if I were to play this one, this is what you're gonna hear when we select one of those buttons, either by using hand tracking, by using array, and also by using controllers. And then this one right here is going to be the ambient sound of the experience. I wanted to have something like a mystery sci-fi sound and I think this one fits perfectly. 
I'm a fan of sci-fi movies, so as you guys would notice by this experience. But anyway, so what we can do though is on each one of these ones, I'm going to play a sound. So I'm gonna do the first one and then I'll fast forward and do the other one. So I'm gonna do an, a new behavior, go into actions and then play sound. And then I'm gonna be selecting in this case, a user interface. So you have on click, you have on pointer down, on pointer up, on pointer enter and so on. So what I'm gonna do for this one and most of them are going to be on click. And then I'm also going to add another one, which is going to be for the music that we're going to be playing. So in the case of on click, I want the volume to be one on the case of the background music, which I'm also going to be doing on click. I want it to be maybe 0.7. It's going to be a good number. And then we can just enable these to be run at any time. That way we can do, we can test it as we play with them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press it and you can hear it. You can hear the background music. So I'm gonna do it again. It restarted. Labels on. How about rotating with labels off? It looks like that's working. Try that. Okay, rotating with labels on. And then we can also look at the scale and tilt. I also added transitions on these other objects. So if I go to Marsh right now, you're gonna see that we also have on click events and then we're targeting the states here under the environment. So I could basically just select this. Okay, so that was a quick overview of some of the cool features available with Mothercraft. Be sure to check out their website below and also try Mothercraft for free for 14 days if you want to consider it or register below with the low cost developer plan, which is $10 per month and it gives you unlimited AR, VR and mixed reality projects to play with. So that's everything for today, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know below and happy XR coding. Thank you.